With the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, AMD has set a new precedent for the worst CPU name in history. Oh, and also a new bar for integrated graphics. That's cool. Maybe should have started with that. Discrete level iGPUs is something I've been patiently waiting for since I popped my first mini PC cherry with Intel's NUC many years ago. That's what you come here for, the lewd jokes. So when I first heard about AMD's Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, oh God, I was of course very interested, but it always takes a bit of extra time for the chips to filter down from laptops to mini PCs. And here's the first one we have the opportunity to test, the GMK Tech Evo X2. A big boy, much bigger than I thought it would be actually. So what's so special about AMD's terribly named CPU? Well, it has a lot of CPU cores, 16 in total with 32 threads and a ginormous Radeon 8060S iGPU with 40 cores, compared to the 8 or so we're used to seeing with regular mini PCs. AMD has also given the CPU a 256-bit wide memory bus and unified memory architecture to remove the need for pricey graphics memory. Instead, the Evo X2 uses soldered LPDDR5X memory running at 8000 mega transfers, and the results are very impressive indeed. But it's not all sunshine and unicorns, and we'll go over why that is shortly. The Evo X2 is a mix of metal, the silver parts, and plastic. The black parts, both mashed together for a unique looking mini PC. I don't think it would win any beauty contest, but it's not ugly either. It also has non-obnoxious RGB lighting if you're into that um, side of computing. But unfortunately, it can't be turned off, which is disappointing. The overall build quality of the mini is okay, but I wouldn't say it feels up to par with its price tag. Plenty of creaks and squeaks in the hands. And speaking of price, it's both the cheapest mini PC I've seen with this AMD CPU, while also being by far the most expensive mini with integrated graphics we've ever looked at. Of course, the graphics performance is discrete mobile level and should be compared against minis with dedicated GPUs. The base model of the Evo X2 with 64GB of RAM and a 1TB SSD is $1500 US dollars. You can double RAM and storage for 2000 bucks. The base model is targeted at gamer bros, while the 128GB RAM model is going for the AI bros, with LLMs or language learning models benefiting from the unified memory, 256-bit wide memory bus, and higher RAM capacity. Of course, the Evo X2 has many other uses, but you're paying a bit much if you only plan to use it for web browsing, YouTube, and Word documents. Accessory-wise, GMK Tech includes a 19.5 volt, 230 watt power supply, HDMI cable, and manual. Nothing fancy there. There's no horizontal stand. It's made to stand up vertically only. If you were to place it flat, it would cover the vent on the side and possibly blow up. I mean, overheat. The top front has a lighting mode button with a few variations, but as mentioned, no off mode for those of us that aren't into rainbows. The unfortunately named P mode button toggles performance modes and shows it on screen. I'd also have liked to see a small LED next to the button to indicate which mode it's currently on. Anyway, there are three modes, basically a quiet, balanced and performance mode, increasing the power limit each time. Oh. And fan noise. Always the fan noise. Next to that is a full sized SD card reader, USB 4 40 gigabit port, dual USB 3 10 gigabit, and a 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack. Jim Tech has thrown in a MediaTek Wi Fi 7 chip for wireless and Bluetooth. The back has another 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack, Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN, USB 3 10 gigabit, USB 4. DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.1 FRL, and dual USB 2. With the Evo X2, we've regressed to hiding screws under bits of rubber again. Once the top four screws are out, we have access to the RGB fan. The dual M.2 Gen 4 NVMe slots are accessible, as is the M.2 wireless card. No heatsink is included for a second drive. 
Removing the two remaining screws gives you access to the CPU cooling consisting of two blowers. GMK Tech always includes Windows 11 Pro with their pre-builds, and like all the ones I've tested, this one is malware and rootkit free. One thing they have added this time is a pre-installed AI app. It has two LLMs, DeepSeek and Llama 4 Scout, although you can easily add other LLMs as well. It's cool to see Ubuntu works fine with my brief tests where I checked that the GPU driver loads and that sound, Bluetooth, wired and wireless internet function as well. One thing that doesn't work is the P mode, so you'll have to manually set it in the BIOS. For the benchmarks, I went ahead and tested each mode. Since not that many gaming mini PCs have been reviewed, I've added some others with integrated graphics for comparison. Starting with single core Cinebench. It doesn't matter which mode is used, the single core score was virtually the same across the board and matches the best result. In multi-core, the quiet result is nothing amazing, but the balance mode takes the win and is a 31% increase, while the performance mode pushes even further with an 8% improvement over balanced, and clearly is the best performing multi-core mobile CPU we've ever tested in Cinebench. Next up is Geekbench Single Core, which has a variety of CPU workloads and puts the Evo X2 at the top. Again, the different modes didn't make a difference. In Geekbench Multicore, the Evo X2 wins in any mode with slight improvements as you switch upwards. Now on to H.264 CPU video encoding. There's a little difference between the top two modes in this short test. So let's move on to the longer AV1 encoding benchmark and the same thing happens. The Evo X2 didn't manage to beat the 7945HX results in either video encoding benchmark. I expected good things with AV1 GPU encoding and the Evo X2 doesn't disappoint being the fastest as long as you use the balanced or performance mode. We've got limited data for the Geekbench AI CPU test with gaming mini PCs but the Evo X2 has a high score in either mode with only slight improvements. Now the Geekbench AI GPU test which shows the same thing. You can also see how far ahead it is over the Radeon 6600 LE discrete graphics chip. This mini really excels at AI. 3D Mark's Firestrike puts the Radeon 8060S behind the 7600 MXT, but around the RTX 4070M found in the ASUS ROG NUC with the highest P mode. Time Spy shows a different story with the ROG NUC coming out ahead and the Evo X2 in second place with the performance mode. The Steel Nomad Lite result beats the Radeon 7600M XT nicely. Alright, with the game tests there's going to be a few variations, but no upscaling is used, just native rendering. First up we're comparing the Evo X2 versus the Adamant G7PT with Radeon 7600M XT graphics and Isus ROG NUC with an RTX 4070 mobile all at 1440p resolution. The Evo X2 beats the ROG NUC, but the G7PT is clearly ahead in Valorant. In League of Legends, the Evo X2 has the lowest frame rate. Counter-Strike 2 has had a big update since the previous games were tested, and the high quality preset has changed but I'm going to use it anyway. As you can see, there's a big difference between the three units. In Dota 2, the Evo X2 is again the lowest result, but not as far off as the other two. On to some AAA games, and Forza Horizon 5 is again behind the discrete GPUs. And same with Ghost of Tsushima.
Hellblade 2 is a very impressive showing for the Evo X2, matching the ROG NARC. Next, we're checking out 4K and 1440p results against the Atom Man G7PT, and the Evo X2 gets its first win with Cyberpunk 2077. Unfortunately, 4K doesn't hit 30 FPS. Very similar performance in Space Marine 2 at 1440p. Again, 4K isn't good enough without upscaling. In God of War Ragnarok, the G7PT wins out at 1440p, but it's close. At 4K, it holds above 30fps. The Evo X2 does well in PS3 emulation, coming out ahead of the G7PT at 1440p, although this could be due to emulator improvements. Unfortunately, 4K is too slow. Since I met Nick from Gear Seekers at Computex, we become good mates and play some Warzone almost every night. So I have to test it. Here's how it holds up at 1440p and 4K for the COD Bros. Next up is a request from longtime viewer Trustf Tech. Here's Cyberpunk 1080p ray tracing low with path tracing. Unfortunately too slow without FSR3 balance preset, which still doesn't hit 30 FPS. The USB 4 port allows various 40 gigabit devices to be connected to it, including an eGPU, which is what I'm testing here. This is an RTX 4070 Super connected to the Evo X2. Adobe Photoshop results show the Evo X2 far ahead with this limited data set. It doesn't really matter which mode you use, there's little difference between them. Adobe Premiere does get a good boost with the higher performance modes, and the Evo X2 would make for a nice video editing workstation. The full size SD card reader is a nice bonus. Comparing the storage benchmarks to all the other mini PCs I've reviewed which are not listed here, the Evo X2 has one of the fastest drive results. The SSD temp held up okay, with no thermal throttling recorded when thrashing the SSD with Cinebench running in the background. All the minis in this stack we've looked at have low Bluetooth range apart from the ASUS ROG NARC. 3.5 meters or 11.5 feet isn't terrible for the Evo X2, but it's not good either. Happy to report there were no issues with wireless when I tested gaming at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. Since the Evo X2 is just one chip handling everything, idle power draw is very impressive compared to the minis with discrete graphics. Maximum power draw depends on which performance mode is used. The highest hit 199 watts, which is still below the ASUS ROG NUC and the G7PT, which uses a lot more. Max CPU temp with quiet mode is good, while both balance and performance mode run much hotter. AMD's Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 has a GPU temp sensor, but since it's the one chip, it ended up being the same temp maxed out on both the CPU and GPU side. The Evo X2's fan noise depends on the power mode, but fair warning, it's not a quiet mini PC at all. While the Mini is not quite symmetrical, I measure each end as if it was a box, and surprisingly, that way the Evo X2 takes up more volume than the Minis with discrete graphics. Like I said, it's a big boy. You can enter the BIOS with the delete key. The main page has the power mode selection which is overridden by the P mode button, but useful if you want to use another OS. In advance, you'll find auto power on and wake on LAN at the top. GFX configuration allows you to allocate the VRAM size, but it's unified memory, so there isn't much point in changing it, and it's already set to the maximum by default. Alright, whoa, this is up there as the biggest time sink for a mini PC review yet. 
The GMK Tech Evo X2 features unprecedented integrated graphics performance that can match discrete mobile graphics. It's a beast for AI workloads. Having a dedicated power mode button is nice, although it would have been better with an LED next to it. An SD card reader makes for a nice photo or editing workstation and the vertical design takes up little space on the desk. However, the price is high for the performance on offer and best suits those also planning to use it for AI workloads. It runs hot on the higher power modes and the fan noise is high. Finally, discrete level gaming performance without the need for a separate GPU chip. But it comes in at a hefty price when comparing to something like the Adamant G7PT. Although the Evo X2 does come with more memory. Still, it would be nice if AMD drops the price on these chips. I don't see that happening anytime soon with the lack of competition from Intel. So that's the market we're in. Links in the video description if you're interested. And thanks to GMK Tech for allowing me to take a look at it. If you like a smaller, cheaper option with Oculink, then maybe GMK Tech's Evo X1 is of interest. You can find the review of it right here. Cheers!